Hi, thank you for checking out the Jack Amorphic Lens Kit for Blender. This is a two times anamorphic lens that uses physical optics in the 3D space to achieve the compression and distortion of cinema lenses that we all know and love. Let's put one on the camera now so we can see the effects. Boy, that's really wide. Once you stretch this out, you'll notice it's a little bit too wide. What we do here is we shoot on a four by three aspect ratio piece of film, and then it starts to look a little better. You can see the effects of the distortion in the background with the, the bokeh on the Christmas lights on the tree there. They start to stretch vertically a little bit more. That's one of the many effects of anamorphics that make it kind of beautiful. Now that you've seen what a two times anamorphic lens looks like, let's jump into some test shots that I took this week. A little disclaimer, I'm, a, I'm more of an engineer than an artist, so I very much rushed these shots, denoised them like hell. So let's keep an eye out for the depth compression, the distortion, and the effect on out of focus light sources that this lens kit produces in camera. Now that you've seen a few now that you've seen a few example renders with this product, please take a look at the Blender Market page and consider purchasing. I think it'll bring a nice spice to your renders, some realism and uh, just an effect you can't get that easily with the nodes for compositing. This is all in camera. If you've already purchased and you're looking for a tutorial of how to use it, stick around. We're going to jump right in. I'll open up Blender and we'll talk about how to import this into your project and how to use it and all the features. Hi, so you must have purchased and you're looking for how to use this asset. Um, when you open up the Jack Amorphic lens, you're gonna see this screen in Blender. Uh, I've got a lot of information here in the text file included that will kind of step you through. I think you should read this first. Um, the biggest note here is that flares don't work. Um, I, I, with enough samples, I've been picking up some optical uh, reflections and stuff and it, it, it seems like something maybe for the future but for now just keep that in mind it don't work uh you got two camera sets here you've got if you look in your hierarchy hierarchy on the right side you've got um a dual focus method and a single focus method so what this looks like in the viewport let me just get rid of this uh text file here make this bigger so here's our camera um you're gonna notice there's a giant empty here that you'll need to move around to set your focus point. And as you move this around uh, distance wise, you'll notice, um, oh boy, you can't see my mouse. Uh, <clears throat> you, you'll, you're gonna notice that the lens element in front of the camera moves in respect to uh, where you place the focus. This is very important optically. Um, for the single focus method, you're shooting through four glass elements, and for the dual focus method, you're just shooting through two. So I think the dual render, or the dual focus method actually renders a little quicker. Um, it's got less paths to bounce through. It can, it can work well. Each one has its advantage. So um, let's jump right into a live view. So we know the Suzanne model, and Included in this kit is also a couple other stacks of objects. The circles are very important to be able to tell your anamorphic squeeze ratio because if you stretch this out horizontally, uh, it'll it'll tell you if you're still maintaining a two times squeeze or if you need to adjust it with a, a curve and post. Um, but already, from where I have this uh, focus point. Let's go to a side view so it's a little easier. I'm going to focus on this circle here. You can see this is sharp. Very, very sharp. So it's in focus and it's definitely squeezing twice the height that it normally should. If you're curious to see what the view looks like with um, 
not blocking it, looks like this. So if you can imagine shooting through a lens physically, you are limited on your focal length. Uh, these camera settings are here to, you can play around with these as much as you want, just avoid vignetting, or if you want extra vignetting, I would say um, tweak some of the geometry that is, that is visible. There's a little bit of vignetting around the frame um, that's dependent on your aperture number. Um, this geometry also has, if you grab that inside ring, just like this, this is also a source of vignetting. I have them out of the way just so we can pretend for a, a totally nominal case for now. Um, but artistically, sometimes you want vignetting and it looks nice. So let's go back to grabbing our focus. I would say the disadvantage of the single focus method is definitely with close focuses. I've only calibrated it out to about, um, I would say, let's look at our absolute Y position here. Yeah, it's, it's hovering about a, at about a meter. And then maybe don't go closer than three quarters of a meter or 0.8. You'll still get results, um, but things will taper off since I didn't calibrate it. And I didn't calibrate it on purpose because I think the squeeze falls off in a way that just wouldn't be beneficial to you. So if you want to pull a very, very close focus, that's when we would jump over to the double focus method, which is also advantageous for wider angles. Um, the sensor size currently set up right now is a micro four thirds, 17.3 width, millimeter width. Um, and because we're talking about scaling sizes, focal lengths, and all this, the scale of your scene is so important to the effect you're going to get. A lot of times when animators make things in Blender, um, they don't care about scale. They just blow things up. Everything's relative to the size of the character. I would say be as pungent with your scaling. Make, make a human model the actual height of the model in meters or whatever units you're working with because that will bring the realism of this lens to life. Um, because the lens elements here are based on scales, and I would not recommend scaling this camera up in any way. If you really want to do some kind of macro, whatever, scale the scene up in that case, sure. Um, but keep that in mind, that's very important, since this is shooting through glass elements. Okay, so I'm pulling, I'm pulling the focus around. We're focused very close here on the red monkey. Here he is, he's looking sharp, um, but not too sharp because imperfect focus is another attribute of anamorphic lenses. Let's grab the focus again, push all the way after the light sources. The light sources then become smaller. Um, they're modeled directly across horizontally, but you'll see the barrel distortion of this lens and the focal length you choose um, you can see start bending on the bottom and the top, and the further you get away from the center, um, the less sharp the focus, all those attributes are there. Push a little bit further out to, you know, whatever uh, infinity might entail. You can do, um, you can take your camera attributes and roughly guess uh, with some calculators about your hyperfocal distance and what infinity would be for you. Um, th that's important as well. Uh, but just know, focus is tied to this empty. So if you're using the single focus method, use the single focus controller. And the double focus, we'll try in a second. I just want to see a little range of focal lengths. So I know I'm, everybody's not everybody's keen to a micro, <clears throat> micro four thirds sensor. So let's put this on 35 millimeter sensor. Oh my gosh, we're two times wider now. So, usually with these setups, if you have a if you have a very very big uh, or a full frame camera sensor, you're gonna have to obviously you know double your focal length. Focal length, whatever algorithm they use with these um, these f stop numbers, that's another downfall for animation. I think they get away with putting a 0 0.2 for an f stop number, and optically that's just so hard to achieve. And optically that would just look terrible. Um, you're gonna to want to you're gonna to want to stop down um, when you're at higher focal lengths. So here's that four five 
things are still blurry, you still focus close, um, but it's a little more real. So if, if you need to do some research on basic photography and maybe pick up a camera to try this stuff, I would recommend it because you would only learn more on how to use this and get some more realism from your shots. So there we go, focused out. Um, I think while calibrating this, I even pushed this sucker to like, oh boy, something like 400. 400 out of 4.5 is not realistic either, so we're going to have to crank this up. And, oh, we're focused on the purple, that's why. So, he's in focus. Let's push it out. Let's type in a 1,000. That's, you know, it's got to be infinity. Monkey in the back is sharp. Awesome. Okay, I think I've shown you enough of the single focus method. So let's just overview quickly the double focus method. I'm going to make, when you change cameras, I disabled this entire set and I've enabled the dual focus method in the corner here. I know my mouse isn't showing, so I'm very sorry. Make sure you go to your scene settings, change it to dual focus camera, and boom. Okay, um, dual focus, a little bit different, less elements, um, you get different artifacts with squeezing, um, things like that. I think, I don't have a preference, but a cool artifact of this, it's a completely different separate camera. So let me punch in that 35 millimeters again. Last time we had to pretty much go to 100 millimeters, not to clip the sides, but look at this. Now we're filling this four by three frame at just 60 millimeters. So that got us much wider. And with wider um, focal lengths, you can, then you can start to stop down to those 0.9s and whatever. Um, I don't think I would go below 0.9. Blue Monkey's pretty sharp. And anamorphics don't generate a plane of focus. It's, it's this interesting, um, curve of focus uh, using with, with depth, and that's, that's very important for the effect. I think some of you guys are going to call out this um, out of focus bokeh here. Uh, we want, when we render, we definitely want oval shaped bokeh. The diamonds are definitely an artifact of not producing um, of, of the imperfections of cycles, so if I were to drop this ratio down, you'll see this will Definitely do some interesting stuff. Um, this is an optics characteristic. If you really want oval bokeh, just crank this back to two or to 1.5 on the single focus. Um, play with it. A lot of this you're gonna have to experiment, especially having up blade numbers. If I put this at um, a low blade number, you'll still have to start to see the, the number of blades on the bokeh. So what I've included with the dual focus, advantage of dual focus, you can go wider, and you can uh, focus even damn closer. Uh, so to focus real close, if you've never used the diopter in photography before, let's put our focus at infinity. Let's just type in a thousand meters away. And then we're going to slap in front of it. We're going to enable one of these two diopters. I have a, a I have a estimated range diopter and then an extreme close-up, like a plus 10. And now everything's really stretchy. So definitely tailor in a look. I think I would do a little more focal length here. Um, play with the aperture a little bit. And what is, he, what is he focused on? I think he's focused on this little guy. Let's pull him really close. And then we will pull our, our focus controller back in and from infinity, of course. And look at that. Now we're focusing on something that's 0.6 meters away. And the, uh, the bokeh in the background is really exaggerated. I did a really cool screenshot of a close-up of Spider-Man. I can't see it. I don't know. It's a, um, a superhero's mask. And it looked really cool doing this dual focus method. So just play with them both. Give them a shot. Um, I think you'll like what you see. Okay. 
how do I put this in my project? Let's uh, let's jump over to a project. Here's the wood doll that was um, the creator of this is tagged in the video. Um, I really like this asset. I played around a lot with animating it. Kind of like, oh, little <clears throat> little poses and stuff. Um, so this is my scene. Just an HDRI and the doll. I'm going to append and I'm going to go uh, to the Jack Morph pack version one. This is where it's up to you. If you don't want to import both methods, you don't have to, but import the collection um, for camera pack version one if you want to just throw both in and experiment, or you could do them individually. So I'm going to grab both. You see both cameras. Let's just start with the single focus. So I disabled the double focus, and in the render scene, uh, the scene settings, I'm choosing the single focus as the camera. Now he's got the black triangle on top of it so you know okay this is good let's go to a top view and move the focus just on the character there let's put it like right on her face and then uh, let's position the camera in a way that would be kind of nice just a straight on view to start jump to camera view i think the micro four third settings are still applied and hey we have an image and it's shooting through glass. So I'm looking around the place going, oh, where is this? And let's start to pull her in closer. And these are some of the test shots I was taking earlier. That looks nice. You can see the background's kind of blowing up. I want to actually get it from the single. No, I want to get these lights in it. Yeah, okay. So what I'm also going to do here, just so we can play with the depth again, I'm going to append the test objects. And let's see, where, where can I just throw them in the distance here? Like this. Okay, now they're floating around her in the background. And it looks very integrated to the scene, distortion-wise and everything. Let's take our focus controller. Let's move this over. I forgot my webcam was blocking, but I'm grabbing the focus controller and I'm moving it outwards. And look at the lens breathing of the background. Whoa, very cool, very cool. Focus really close in, breathe. Breathe even more. And now I'm focusing on different ones of the monkeys that are in the scene. This one's behind her. Oh, well, they're all, I think they're all behind her depth wise. Um, that's how you do it. So you can animate the empty for the focus, and obviously you can animate the camera. Ooh, that looks cool. Yeah, um, <clears throat> if you have any questions or you're really struggling, just let me know. I'm trying to be very responsive with email. So let's, uh, let's wrap this up by just saying, hey, that's the shot I want. Maybe a little lower, because I'm picky. That's the shot I want. Let's render it. While you're rendering, don't forget to go to the View tab here. It's going gonna, it's gonna to look like this. Don't forget to open the display view and crush that aspect ratio down. It won't save it this way, but um, it's a good way to view it. You can look at, look for your sharpness. You can look for artifacts. Um, God, that looks cool. Ah, I'm so proud. Okay, let me know. I gotta go. Bye.